Hello all. In today's video, I will show you how to create a teleporting system that you can use to move your player character around the environment. Let's jump in. Okay, open up a new map and let's create some new assets. In our content drawer, we will right click and we'll create three different items. A blueprint of type actor. We'll call this BP underscore teleport locator. Right click, create a material, call this M underscore teleport material. Right click one more time and create a new Niagara system. We'll use a new system from selected emitter and we will use a fountain. Hit plus and then finish. I'll call this NS underscore teleport particles. I will also right click and go to blueprint. Blueprint interface and create a blueprint interface called BPI underscore teleport logic. So the structure of these will be that we'll use the blueprint interface to call events from our player to our teleport indicator. And our teleport indicator will be the object in 3D space that shows us where we are going to teleport to. So, first, what we'll do is we will go into our teleport indicator. We'll add two components. We'll add a cylinder and we will add a Niagara particle system component. I'll change the height of this to 0.1 and I'll move this five units up in space so that it sits on the ground. I will use my teleport material, which we'll create in a second, we'll add it in a second, and make this the material for our cylinder. And then the Niagara system that we've created, we'll use this as the Niagara system asset type. So let's just set one thing first here. In our cylinder, we'll type collision to get all of our collision related settings. I'll say generate overlap events is false. Can character step on equals no, and collision is no collision. This way, it's just sort of an object in space that is not collided with and cannot be walked on by the player. All right, so now let's create some of our uh, material information. <clears throat> I'll double click to open up the teleport material. This will be simple. I'll press and hold three on my keyboard and left click to create a, a, a float three value. This is the same as getting a constant three vector like this. I'll right click this and say convert to parameter call this color. In my value picker down here, I'll make this a sort of light blue. I'll drag this into base color. And then let's select the new blend mode as masked. And we're going to right click and type dither temporal. So basically what this does, is this is a way of masking it out. It is a more performant method than translucent. Uh, and basically what it does is sort of creates this grid of pixels that makes it see through like a, a mesh, like a, you know, a net almost. Um, and then we will create a variable that is our translucency value. We'll just turn this into a parameter, call this uh, translucency. And I'll make this 0.3 or 0.4. So you can see, you know, there's a sort of grid of pixels through here that we can see through, which makes this translucent. I'll save and let's continue on to our particle system next. In our content drawer, we'll open up our teleport particles. This will be something that sort of pops up from the edge of the, uh, of the teleport indicator. So let's go into first our shape location, which says sphere. Up here, we're going to change this to torus. Our radius will be 50 because that is the radius of our cylinder. Our handle radius will make this five. We'll go into initialize particle and let's turn down the size of these uh, from minimum two to maximum four. So that's right here where it says uniform sprite size. Let's turn off gravity. So we're gonna, we can really just delete this using the delete key. Let's change the drag to one. 
and you'll notice they're sort of spraying. What we want to do is make them go up vertically. So we're going to change where it says velocity mode in cone in the details. We're going to change this to linear. And we can change this value to maybe 100. So it's like that. Let's go back up to initialize particle. We'll change the color to a sort of blue, which will match our material that we've created. And let's increase our spawn rate a little bit. Let's make this 150. So we have something like that. So now let's compile and save. And we go back to our teleport locator. Now we'll see that the material and the particle system have refreshed to have the base and the sort of vertical uh, particle system coming out of it. Now let's add some functions in our blueprint interface that we will use to communicate with our teleport indicator from our character. So in my blueprint interface, which I've called BPI teleport logic, double click, and we're going to add two functions. The first will be called change teleport stability. We'll add a Boolean input and say, uh, make visible. And this will all make sense in just a little bit, but we're going to use this to communicate with our indicator. And I'll add one more function up here and I'll say, successful teleport. And this is what we'll use when we teleport successfully to spawn unique effects on the indicator. I'll compile, I'll save, and I'll go to my teleport indicator, my blueprint that we've created. In our class settings, I will go to interfaces, implemented interfaces, and I will add the BPI teleport logic I've created. You'll see that on the left now, there are two events which I can right click and implement. So I can use these when we communicate with our uh, indicator. And we'll get into that in just a sec. So now we're going to create the logic on our player character. So let's go to our content drawer and I will type third person character. I'll double click and open up. So what we're going to do here is basically the following. When we right click, we will trace forward in space. And if we hit a flat enough surface, we will spawn the indicator on it. And if we hit a wall, we will not spawn an indicator. So we'll right click to basically spawn the actor that shows where we're going to go. And when I left click, it will then teleport the player to that location and orient them towards the teleport. So let's jump in on how to do that. So First, what we want to do is we want our right mouse button and left mouse button events. So basically, when these are pressed and released, then we will be able to, you know, call a function or event from it. And this is not using enhanced input. This is just standard input. And OK, so for our right mouse button, what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom event and we'll call this deal with teleport. So let's add a Boolean value here that says is pressed. And then out of our right, right mouse button, we'll say deal with teleport. We'll say, well, let's actually compile this. Let's deal with teleport. Um, Wire this in here. Let's say is pressed. And I'll then add another event, which is a call to this function down here that says is pressed, is false. So when it's released, is pressed is false. When it is pressed, is pressed is true. And that'll feed this value through here, for which we'll use um, in a way that, you know, functions differently for when it's pressed and released. So let's start off here by adding a branch, dragging this in here. And now we're going to deal with spawning and tracing our, our indicator blueprint. So what we want to do is first over here, we'll say line trace by channel. And we're going to be tracing from our camera location. So I will say, get our follow camera. 
and I will say get world location. I will also say get forward vector. I will multiply our forward vector. And we will say, pull off here and say float. And we'll convert this float to a vector. We'll drag off here, say promote to variable. And we'll call this trace distance. And then we will add this value to this value. And I'm actually just going to delete some of these before. Actually, that's okay. Um, I will promote this. Oh, so here, first we'll add this into the end and then this into the beginning. So basically we're tracing from the camera location to a location that is this distance in front of the camera in the forward vector of the camera. So I will drag this in and I'll say true. And we're actually going to now collapse this to a function. So I'll collapse to a function and say trace forward from camera. And now we have this function. All right, so let's add a little more to this function. What we're going to do is we're going to go inside and we're going to promote this to a local variable. We'll call this camera location. Drag this in here. I'll promote this new value to a, a local variable and call this trace end location. Drag this in like that. In here. And for now, what we can do is we can say for a duration, we will trace the, we'll draw this trace as a debug line so we can see what it looks like. And now we want to test with a branch. Actually, let's change this. This is a multi line trace. So let's make sure we have a line trace by channel, not a multi line trace. So we want to test the return value, which basically says, was there a successful hit? And then we will drag out from here where it says out hit. We'll say break hit result. And if there was a successful hit, what we then want to do is promote this to a variable. And we'll say uh, trace hit location. And we'll drag this off here. And then I can say add return node. I'll drag this in here. And then we're going to add two variables here. The first will be our trace hit location, which we can drag this here. Say get that, drag it here. And then we'll add also an output as a Boolean, which would be hit successful. In this situation, the hit is successful. So we'll say true, but now we're going to accommodate for situations where there is no hit. So right here where it says hit not successful, we also want to account for if it, you know, is let's say a thousand units forward in space, but not directly targeted at the ground. So we'll trace downwards to allow the player to be looking forward in space and still teleport without staring directly at the ground at the camera. So what I'll do is this is going to be a secondary trace. <clears throat> so I'll copy my line trace by channel to over here. I'll drag this node in here. I will start at the trace end location and I will subtract a vector, which will be Let's say 400 units downwards and drag that into the end. If the hit is successful, I will set, so what we're going to copy the hit result break over here 
So we'll grab this into break hit result. We'll grab this return value into this branch. If, if it is a successful hit, we're going to set this as the hit location, which is where it's going to spot move the indicator. And if it is not a hit, then we're going to move down here and execute some logic. So first I will grab my return node, copy this over here. And I'll drag this in here and the hit is successful. 